Hello, it's Patrick here from the Garage Band Guide, and in this video, I'm going to show you three things that you didn't know about the Garage Band iOS app. So, without further ado, let's dive in. It's dead easy to find your way around the sampler, so when you launch it, you'll find yourself on this screen where you can select between recording a new sample or choosing a sample from your library. So I'll record a sample just now by hitting the start button. La <laughs> and you can hear I'm able to play my amazing sample by hitting the keys at the bottom of the screen here. <laughs> That's a bit silly. You can use the arrow keys here to change the octave and the pitch of your sample. And you can get some pretty wacky sounds this way. The sustain slider does what you would expect the sustain slider to do. Now with this switch you can change the properties of the virtual piano. Um, the glissando lets you run the notes up and down as you press them. Scroll allows you to manually move the keyboard to reach higher or lower octaves and notes. And pitch lets you affect the pitch of your sample by sliding up and down on the keys on the keyboard at the bottom there. And you can cut and resize your sample uh, by dragging and dropping the edges the same way that you can with any track in the full project window. You're also able to reverse your sample as well. You can get some quite interesting sounds with that as well. As you can hear there. You can loop too. So just hit loop, hold down the key and your sample will automatically loop over and over for as long as you hold down on the key. You can tune your loop as well. It gives you a tone to tune to. Not that I'm doing a very good job here. <laughs> That's not working. You can fine tune it too, just in case it's a little bit flat or sharp, which is pretty handy. Obviously not in this case. <laughs> And shape lets you actually affect the EQ of your sample. And you can change it just with these three EQ points here. And it's just a case of dragging them to where you want them to be. Like the other smart instruments in the GarageBand app, you can set to have only set notes from a particular scale available to be played. And it's the same selection of scales as you'll find in all the other smart instruments too. And there's a cool arpeggiator there as well that you can have a play around with. Really, really handy if you've got some decent samples. Not so great if you've recorded something really stupid like I have. This is really great for uh, things like dubstep or any kind of uh, glitch kind of tunes that you're putting together. You can really make some interesting sounds with it. So that's the built-in sampler on the GarageBand app. It's definitely the most underused and, dare I say, underappreciated part of the app. And it's definitely worth diving in and having a play around with. Here we are in a GarageBand project and you can see it's 8 bars long which is the standard length of an untouched project or a new project and if it runs to the end it simply loops back to the start. Not only can you lengthen this by tapping the annoyingly tiny plus icon in the top corner here uh, there we are, section A, 8 bars I'll just double this up to 16 bars. Yeah, so when you increase the number of bars, 
GarageBand automatically fills the extra space with what you had already recorded. Which is a great way to start building your track really, really quickly. Another sneaky track building tip. If you've been using different sections to put together the different parts of your track. So for instance here, I have section A as my verse. Section B as my bridge and section C as my chorus. So I've got a verse, bridge and a chorus. And I'm going to want to have another verse after that chorus. Then another bridge and so on and so on. The sneaky bit is that you can just duplicate the section that corresponds to the verse in this case section A, and GarageBand will automatically place it after the chorus, in this case section C, in the song's order. Now I can go on and do the same thing with the bridge, which is section B, and the chorus again, so that when I select all sections at the top here, and GarageBand puts it all together as one continuous track, I've pretty much got a full song mapped out for me. It's a brilliant way to quickly and pretty easily start getting your song put together. <music> Lastly, I'll show you how to back up your GarageBand iOS app projects onto your Mac and even how to open them on your Mac so you can harness the full power of GarageBand 11 and start taking the projects you've been working on to the next level. On the track select screen, hold down onto the icons until they do that funky little dance they do and select the project that you want to export. Tap the share icon in the top right hand corner and select share song via iTunes. You'll be able to choose between sending it as a track that will play in iTunes um, or as a GarageBand project. You want to choose send it as a GarageBand project at this point. Here we are in iTunes. So having connected your iDevice to your Mac, um, select it from the sidebar in iTunes and choose apps from the menu at the top. You'll notice the file sharing section down at the bottom here. Uh, select GarageBand from the list and then choose your project that you want to import from the menu that appears. So just highlight it and click save to. Then save it wherever you want to save it. I'm going to put it on my desktop for just now. And there it is, safely backed up. You can open it as a full GarageBand project um, just by double clicking on it as normal. Um, though if this is the first time that you've imported a GarageBand iOS app project onto your Mac, you will have to download a little update. It takes a couple of minutes, it's not a big deal. Um, and once you're done, there you go. That's your project in GarageBand 11 and you can tinker with it to your heart's content. There you are, that's three things you didn't know about the GarageBand iOS app. If you like this video, then make sure you hit subscribe, uh, hit like, it really does help. And make sure you come and check out the garagebandguide.com. There's loads more tutorials, tricks, all that good stuff. Just click the link below in the description box. Bye for now.